have all these economic indicators. We watch the stock market, we watch the unemployment rate, and this is essential information for making our day-to-day -day and long-term decisions. And we, we really wouldn't make rational decisions without that information. We need that information about the environment. We need to know how climate is changing, and we need to know how plants and animals are responding. And that's the information that we can use to make rational and, and in the long run, the right decisions about how we manage our resources. So when we think about climate change, we need to think about what are conditions going to be like in the future? And one way to think about that is where could you go and see, you know, this is the climate you expect. If we just think about California, and we look here on the right, under, you know, one of the many future scenarios that we consider, these dark red areas are novel climates. They're conditions that are projected for the future that currently don't occur anywhere in this California, Nevada region. And what we're seeing is that these very hot regions become more and more like the adjacent deserts, either the Mojave or the Sonora or Baja California. These orange areas are areas where the climate that's experienced there today, currently we see just in the hottest parts of the LA Basin, Bakersfield, the Owens Valley, may expand to cover the entire Central Valley. Here's the question. You're sitting in one place, climate is changing, it's getting warmer, and a plant or an animal is trying to offset that change, where would they go? And we've measured that, in what's shown here, in this idea of the velocity of climate change. How quickly would a species need to move to keep up with changing climate? What's interesting with that idea is they don't need to move as fast in mountainous regions. If you can move up a mountain or move from a south slope to a north slope or down into a cool valley, those shifts might be much uh, shorter. The distances are shorter, the speeds are shorter. Whereas in the Central Valley or in the Salinas Valley, you have to move very fast to offset a given episode of change. This is an example of the, the kinds of models we do of the possible impact of climate change on individual plant species. We start with the present range of the species and all those white dots are observations in the field. They can represent the observations of these plants that are in the natural reserves. We model that in relation to climate and then project that model forward under various scenarios of increasingly severe climate change because of course we don't know how rapid and how severe climate change may be over this century. For California, we see some particularly important projections. One is that a lot of these plants, the ranges are compressed toward the coast. And this reflects that buffering effect of the ocean, that climate change is less extreme near the ocean. And the suitability of the climate for these plants is likely to be maintained for a longer period of time close to the coast. Whereas in the interior, the, imp the impacts are expected to be much more severe. Our models say that species may move to new places as climate changes, the climate becomes suitable. The problem is they need to get there. And in addition to the biological challenges, in a sense, the rate of seed dispersal and how quickly the, they may be able to move, now we have increasingly we have a fragmented landscape. We have urbanization, highways, agriculture, so fewer and fewer sort of stepping stones across the landscape where these species can establish populations as climate changes. And this fragmentation poses an additional threat to biodiversity in the long run.